book haul. Not another book haul. Oh my God. You guys are going to get tired of looking at really cool, outrageous, uh, scarce, and uh, really nice uh, vintage paperbacks. But uh, I don't work them up. It's science fiction. It's science fiction, but uh, this is some, some, pretty, some pretty nice stuff. So here we have some items that we found recently. And uh, we're going to go through them. And uh, some of them, some, most of them are British. And uh, we'll go through them now. Let me just get my glasses. Actually, here's a, a, a Vonda and McIntyre Super Luminal uh, Pocket Books. This was uh, Pocket Books, one of the only pocket uh, uh, so, um, science fiction that Robert McGuire did the cover art for this uh, for this book. And in fact, when I met Bob many years ago in the uh, in the uh, 80s and 90s, he was painting this painting. He was, uh, we were at his house and he was painting it. He's got the, the webbed the girl, girl with the webbed fingers. It's a beautiful painting. Um, venture science fiction. This is Hamlin, British. We all died at Breakaway Station. Um, classic science fiction, Richard C. Meredith. He died rather young and he was an excellent uh, science fiction writer in the, um, in the vein of H. Beam Piper and uh, and uh, Philip K. Dick and others. He was really good. And all his books are very, very good. Um, another British book, Panther, um, number 1142, The 22nd Century by John Christopher. Nice, uh, nice science fiction British there. Um, Destiny and the Dolphins by Roy Myers. This is a Ballantine. Uh, 01627 from 1969 Valentine science fiction novel there's I think two or three in that series um, here we have a uh, perma star number 310 and it's uh, against the fall of night by Arthur C. Clarke so very early uh, probably around 1953 Arthur C. Clarke um, science fiction novel, and I believe that's the Richard Powers cover. Next is uh, next is a uh, Mayflower Dell, uh, number zero four eighty, and this is uh, Battle for the Stars by Edmund Hamilton. This is a British Mayflower Dell science fiction. Um, How actually, do I know Edmund Hamilton? Edmund Hamilton wrote. Um, Captain Future and a okay. lot of other great, uh, he was known as World Wrecker Hamilton because he's, he always had uh, incredible battles taking place in all of his, uh, his, his novels and stories, uh, battles in, between, in the cosmos, throughout space, in the galaxy, uh, really wild uh, space opera. And of course the, um, the Captain Future uh, pulps and, and paperbacks, he, he, he wrote almost all of them. And this is interesting, the British uh, Mayflower Dell. Uh, Dell is an American company, Mayflower is a British company, and uh, in, in some cases, the British and American companies would uh, team up for a while to, to do uh, books, Mayflower Dell. Sometimes um, Ballantine and Pan also did uh, some books like that together. You have Captain Future Pope someplace, right? You should probably do something on those at some point. Yes, I will do something on the Captain Future Pulps and, and on the paperbacks in the future. Future in the future. In the future? Future in the future. <laughs> um, next book is uh, Revolt in 2100 by Robert, I, Robert A. Heinlein. And this is a Signet book, 1194 from the 50s. Great, great science fiction classic. I don't really like Farnham Street a lot. Um, next one is... House on the Borderland by William Hope Hodgson. Uh, this is a British sphere, sphere uh, book. Um, this is the book that H.P. Uh, Lovecraft uh, recommended. He called it a classic of the first water, H.P. Lovecraft. Um, talking about this William Hope Hodgson novel, House on the Borderlands, which was an amazing horror novel. Um, this is a this is a pretty tough one, actually. It's an early door book, number 48, 
The Other Log of Phineas Fogg uh, by Philip Jose Farmer. And the first printing on this is kind of scarce. And this is, of course, uh, Phineas Fogg was the um, was in the um, Jules Verne um, uh, character in the Jules Verne books. And here, uh, Farmer has taken uh, that character, much as he did with Tarzan Alive and uh, some of the other books that he's written to, uh, to uh, update or uh, do books on, on Tarzan and uh, other, other uh, famous characters. Here's another one, um, um, Haydon of Ancient Opar, but also by Philip Jose Farmer, Magnum book, uh, British, really nice cover art, beautiful cover art. I don't know who did the cover art, but it's beautiful. And this again, it's uh, Hayden of ancient Opar. Opar is a city, lost city in Africa that Tarzan um, discovers and he meets La of Opar, uh, the, the, the queen who falls in love with him. And um, uh, these, these stories, there's a, a couple of novels in this series where Farmer has continued these, these series of, uh, about Opar that was uh, created by Edgar Rice Burroughs and used in the Tarzan books. Um, another really great book is uh, The Divine Invasion by Philip K. Dick. This is a British corgi book. Um, really cool, cool book. Philip K. Dick's kind of take on uh, science fiction and religion. Um, wrote some good stuff. Um, the next book is a Berkeley book, American, The Golden Man by Philip K. Dick. That's one that's, both of these are, the, that's, that's the British Corgi, it's a little kind of, uh, not that common. And even this one here, the American, uh, American Berkeley book of this first printing is uh, a little tough to find. This one's really nice, really nice condition, really fresh and beautiful. As an interesting uh, penguin book, uh, Quater Mass 2 by Nigel Kennelly. Uh, this is a penguin 1448. This is one of the books in the Quater Mass series, and it's a very interesting series. Um, next book is a council book. Uh, N 1018, Four for the Future. It's four stories of uh, by Henry Cutner, Theodore Sturgeon, Paul Anderson, and Eric Frank Russell, and has a Powers cover. This is a reprint, British reprint of the American uh, anthology, four stories. And uh, good stories in here, good writers. It's good stuff. Uh, a Stir of Echoes by Richard Matheson. This is a Crest book. Uh, number 308, United, uh, American uh, printing from the 60s. And the next one is uh, Foursquare, number 954, uh, year 2018 by James Blish. And this is a book that takes place in 2018, which is just two years ago. And uh, it's interesting. I like books with, uh, with years in the title. Uh, because uh, especially science fiction because you can see how far off they were when they're in their predictions a lot of times and a lot of these books were written so this was probably written in the 50s or 60s so it's taking place 2018 which is two years ago uh, so it's uh, I think 2001 Space Odyssey is the most famous right? 2001 probably. Space Odyssey is the most famous that was written in 1968 or 69 it's so, pretty amazing yeah. actually yeah but. yeah um, next one is um, Some of Your Blood by Theodore Sturgeon. Um, it's Ballantine book number four, 438K, it looks like. I can't tell exactly. It's from 1962, paperback original, and it's a uh, vampire novel by this famous science fiction author. It's a horror vampire novel, and it's a this one's got a crease, a little crease here, but it's a tough book to find. It's a paperback original, it's pretty tough to find. 
Uh, the next one is uh, Man From Tomorrow by Wilson Tucker, and that's a uh, Bantam book, uh, American Bantam, 1343, and uh, it reprints the hardcover. Really good one is uh, The Night Side, which is a collection of 19 stories, horror stories edited by August Derleth. It's four square horror, 1657 from 1966, British. Great, great cover art. Another August Derleth uh, book, The Outer Reaches, a new selection of science fiction with fantastic scope and variety. This is Council Book number 1267, British science fiction. I thought he was a Sherlock Holmes dude. He did. He wrote the Solar Ponds uh, um, series of, of, of uh, stories and novels. Is that um, Sherlock Holmes in space or something? No, Solar Ponds is uh, is basically Solar Ponds is basically Durless version of Sherlock Holmes, just under a different name, and and he has a, a doctor who. Solar Ponds is the name. Yeah, Solar Ponds is the okay. name of the. That sounds detective. like a. Like solar makes me think of space. Or no, it's not, right. not anything to do with Sorry. space. Yeah. But in now space, you're saying he's a science fiction writer, so maybe it's. Well, did. he wrote horror. He founded Arkham House. I mean, he, he oh, really? edited a lot of a lot of uh, anthologies. Okay. I'm sorry. Yeah, he was he was a very uh, very astute uh, sorry, author August. author and uh, publisher editor everything. I mean, he was really uh, who happened to like Sherlock Holmes. Yeah, and quite a, quite a, uh, yes, he loves Sherlock, Sherlock Holmes. Uh, the next one is um, Horror 7. Um, this is a Corgi book, 72-71, uh, and um, uh, stories by M.R. James, Pritchard, and others. It's a British edition, giant bug cover art, which is always popular. Um, and it's uh, Horror Stories seven of them. Um, the next one is uh, Compact Book number, well it's Impulse number two. Uh, Impulse was a compact book published, uh, Impulse, which is kind of a science fantasy magazine in paperback uh, format. And um, the cover, cover story on this is The Lady Anne by Keith Roberts, British compact book. In the 60s. I have two of these. Um, we Who Survived, We Who Survived, The Fifth Ice Age, Sterling Noel, that's a Avon original, uh, uh, T360 from about 1959, 1960. And the last one is The Man Who Owned the World by Charles Eric Main. And that's a Panther book number 1610 probably from around 1962 um, the man who owned the world by eric charles may charles eric may uh, and that's a british panther book so there you have some of the book haul that uh, came across recently and uh, one more thing i'd like to show is this box set this is from 1977 it's the universal horror library and uh, this is how they looked. The box isn't uh, mint, of course, and the books aren't mint, but the, the books are nicer than the box because the box protects them. Some of these, some of these uh, books, uh, box sets, are quite uh, uncommon now, and especially having the box, uh, and this box can be fixed up, and it may, these books and the box may appear in a future video uh, where they've been uh, where they've been uh, restored. Well, may they? They may. They may. And uh, the interesting thing, these are from 1977, and there's six of them, and they're all the classic Universal horror movies, and uh, they're all by Carl Dreadstone, who's a pseudonym, and uh, each one has a uh, introduction by. Um, horror author Ramsey Campbell. Now the interesting thing about these is probably uh, at least at least three of them probably were written by Ramsey Campbell. 
and uh, they are really cool books. They're, they're kind of scarce uh, from 1977. The thing is about them is that they have, they're loaded with black and white photos along with the novelization of the script or the screenplay of the movie. They have all kinds of great photos from the, from the movie and from the, uh, from making the movie. So that's The Werewolf of London, The Wolf Man, it's another one. Not to be confused with The Werewolf. Right, it's different. <laughs> wolf Man, The Wolf see Man, the there's The Wolf Man. Different movies, different <laughs> films. And uh, wonder where they got that idea from. Yeah. Classic universal horror from the, uh, from the 30s and 40s. And the, uh, the thing is, it's like the, the stories are pretty cool. So Ramsey Campbell wrote maybe, maybe three of these. And um, they're loaded with, uh, with great, great photos from the classic Universal Horror films. And the next one is Dracula's Daughter. And this is interesting because this is a uh, very well thought of uh, horror movie. Um, it's very, uh, not, not very well known. It's the sequel to uh, Dracula. Um, but it has uh, the movie, it's, the movie itself is, is, is uh, very thought, very well thought of by... Uh, is that Watson? Might, might be Nigel Bruce, maybe. A lot of Sherlockian references in this. Yeah, yeah. The same, the same actors. A lot of them were in a lot of these movies. Is she Dracula's daughter. So Dracula's daughter, which is a sequel kind of to Dracula, um, is actually a uh, very interesting and uh, well-made uh, horror film, better than uh, people uh, people know know about. Uh, it's kind of a sleeper. And, and the, the books are really the books are really cool. The next one is the Bride of Frankenstein, and uh, just again, just if I can get to where the photos are, it's loaded with photos actually of the movies. see here there's, there's photos all over you had to get us a bride picture yeah. let me see I'll find the lovely bride where is the lovely bride the bride of Frankenstein she's got to be here somewhere I don't know there you go, ah, Elsa Lancaster. Yeah, The Bride of Frankenstein. So that's the fourth book in the series. Beauty. The fifth is uh, one another great, great book. Hence The Mummy. And uh, again, loaded with photos. Here's the archaeological dig where they discover the mummy. Great. These are really cool books. I do not remember these when they came out in 1977, and I never saw the uh, the box set. And I just came upon a box set recently, and uh, I think they're really it's a really nice nice series of books. I like these the uni these the Universal Horror, and the last and. Uh, Sixth book of the series, novel inspired by the classic film, Creature from the Black Lagoon. Now this was written by, uh, this is from the, from the story by 
by Maurice Zim, but uh, I believe John Russell Fern wrote the, uh, the original screenplay. I mean, the original uh, novelization of the of the of this movie it was published by Dragon Books in England, hmm. in paperback and hardcover. Creature from the Black Lagoon, and the uh, the uh, it's actually the hard. The, the paperback is actually more scarce than the hardcover. I just watched this movie recently and it was it still holds up good even for the idea that you have a guy dressed up in the Gill Man uh, you know uh, monster suit. It, it really it still it still works. It's still fun. Uh, it wasn't supposed to be fun I don't think. Yeah, it's fun. It's fun. These it's movies are fun. fun. Now. These movies are fun. I mean, I don't know if they were scary or terrifying when they originally came out in the 30s and 40s, but uh, yeah, they're fun now. And um, originally, uh, recent, recently, uh, Greg Ketter of Dreamhaven Books in Minneapolis uh, reprinted the, uh, the, the, the book, The Creature from the Black Lagoon, and uh, in, a, in a beautiful edition a few years back. And uh, he has a great story. He has some little problems with the uh, with problems back there, but um, they're doing good. So this is the uh, and then the box. In these boxes, sometimes they don't hold up well. They get a little. Uh, they could use a little tender loving care over here, which I'm going to see if I can persuade. The Budinsky holding Sounds the camera. Sounds like a ploy. The Budinsky holding the camera. That's, that's to, what uh, I think. Yeah, well, let's see. Can do uh, do her magic on this on this box. Actually, it's pretty sturdy. So the box actually keeps the books pretty nice. All of these books were read, and um, they're pretty cool. So, just wanted to share these books with you. I think uh, some of this fifties uh, and sixties. British and American science fiction, and then the uh, Universal Horror Library uh, box set of six books, uh, classic uh, horror movies from the good old days of black and white horror movies. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed this look at these books, and uh, if you did, give us a thumbs up and a like, and uh, stay cool in this hot weather, and thanks for looking. See you next time.